Welcome to Business Mentorship, Keeping It Real, where we feature entrepreneurs and enterprise leaders who participate in our guest blog found on shareyourstories.online. Our guest is Michaela Donato, interior designer and creative director for her own firm. We're going to discuss serendipity and the events that have led her to a career of creativity. And Mikkel joins us from Erin, Ontario. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Friday. <laughs> yes, I, I'm actually so thrilled that you're able to join us because I know that what, one of the things that we do is we ask folks if they aren't able to join us live, if they want to send us in some questions. And I actually did receive a question from you uh, or for your story. And one of them was, if you could explain to our viewing and listening audience, what does it mean when you say you offer full design services? Yeah, so that's something that I've uh, I've really started to focus on, um, and what I mean by that is uh, full from sort of start to finish. So um, I really want to deliver a service where the client can sort of put their feet up and let the whole project sort of happen and and roll and out, cold, um, yeah. yeah, in front of their eyes and and really not have to worry too much about it. So um, we have a three phase process that um, just carries you through the whole project. So we start with the walkthrough of the home um, and that's where, you know, we can really get excited for what's to come. We start to create that wish list, um, gather our inspiration and um, that really gets the ball rolling. And then from there we jump into the design phase, which uh, I do mostly behind the scenes. So um, I will take that wish list and put everything together, start with the sourcing, price everything out, um, put it in some visual renders. And then when I present that to you, um, sort of when that design phase is, is nearing its end, I have a complete design to show you. So that's really as um, that's the point of the process where the client has to be the most involved. And it's really yeah. just to say, we love the design, let's move forward, or we want to tweak a few things here and there. Um, so from there, once we get the sign off, it's like we implement and, and bring that vision and purchase, to life. Yeah, sure. And purchase everything that they need in order to make it wonderful, right? Exactly. Yeah. So from yeah, ordering, receiving, storing the product, and then um, we deliver everything all at once when whatever renos or or trades have been involved are whenever they're out. Finish. And so then, yeah, you get to sort of come in and have your little TV reveal moment when everything is finally set up at the end. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I kind of consider full service. Well, so, yeah. And I love your reference to TV because we've all watched those, you know, uh, shows on TV where they do the big reveal, right? And then everybody's like having a, a, a wonderful moment where they get to see everything that they've dreamed of all pulled together. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, it doesn't happen in half an hour. But no, that's true. <laughs> but that's true. That finale and, and everything works out sort of oh, in that, that same way. But yeah, it's always funny. I laugh at the HGTV shows. I love them. They're addicting and you get yes. so much inspiration. But uh they do set a little bit of an unrealistic timeline. That's true. That's true. Now, but, one of the things that you you mention in your story is that you you had an opportunity to sort of see a bit of the creative process in your home when your father was in a position where you were kind of retrofitting your home to meet his physical needs. Yeah. So maybe you could give us a little bit of background as to how that light bulb moment happened. Yeah, so he was um, injured in an accident um, and sort of while he was uh, recovering, we, between my mom and my sister and I, we were trying to figure out, you know, like, is it best to relocate? And we all, the whole family sort of loved where we were. Um, and we decided it was best to renovate and just update what we had. Um, and so that was sort of an eye opening experience. Just, I never really considered what that would involve and, and what would really need to be updated. So it was sort of a live and learn kind of situation. Um, and this was before 
I actually got into interior design. So um, while we were going through that process, we, we kind of did our best with the knowledge that we had. Um, and it was, again, we would sort of make updates as, as time went on and as we learned more. But what I really learned was that um, it, the more your house is, you know, retrofitted to you, to you, whether you have a, a specific need um, or whether it's just your personal lifestyle, you're so much happier because it's just catered to exactly what you need every single day. Um, and, you know, if we can all just make those little updates and changes continuously, we're just going to be so much happier. And, and in this situation specifically, it was like night and day between when we were sort of living at home. And then if we say went on a trip or something like that, and the space maybe wasn't as, as accommodating, it was like everyone's mood just took a, a turn and, and no one was as happy because just life wasn't as easy in, in a spot where it wasn't designed for us or for you him. know that's a really good point because I'm sure when you're working with your clients you're really trying to get a bit of their personality into their space because mm -hmm. as you say they have to live in that particular area for the you know a balance of time yeah. or until they decide they want to update their space and you want to make sure that you get that sort of personality their personality involved so yeah. you mentioned something called the psychology of decor so how does that work how do you try to to make a connection with the client so that you're actually being able to include some of that personalization. Yeah. So I think uh, a big part of that is, is the first phase of, of my process. And it's um, that first walkthrough and the first meeting and the phone calls that lead up to that. Um, and it's really just getting to know them and their lifestyle. And it's asking those sort of prodding questions that maybe aren't to do with their design aesthetic or their style or their specific physical wish list of items. But it's like, you know, um, what do you guys do for dinner? Do you like to eat as a family? Do you eat out? Do you eat in front of the TV? Like how, um, how do you use this space? Um, and how can we maximize features to emphasize the positive parts of your day, right? Yeah, like what, yeah. what's the best part of your day? Do you have a nice morning routine? Do you have right. sort of a bedtime routine? How can we, how can we make those even better than they already are? Right. Um, and I think a big part of that too, is like getting to know them. So like I said, asking those sort of unexpected questions, but another part of it too, is sort of getting in their head of, of how, um, the space is used over time because I do now this is sort of um, this is maybe a, a future service that I will offer but um, I always think homes are curated over time and and it's nice when we can sort of add our touches in as you know we experience things and maybe you go on a trip you bring home a souvenir you place it in your home wherever right um, and so they, they really are, are curated and it's not, it, it's easy to sort of say, you know, this is the process and we finish everything from start to finish. Um, and that is true, but I think it's important to continue evolving uh, your That's space. so true. With, with your yeah, life. Yeah. Um, and so one thing that we already offer is um, annual refreshes. So maybe we come through and just do like a little style update or another accessorizing sort of round or something seasonal. But um, is it sort of a dream for the future is I think it would be so interesting to actually live in someone else's space and, and move around and, and use it day to day and then really be able to empathize and, and figure out what that they would need to make the space more functional and more user-friendly and, and just increase that, uh, that positivity, uh, in the space. So 
You know what's really interesting and something that I loved that you had mentioned was that you come in and you sort of give it a little update because how many of us have been on a holiday or we've gone on a shopping spree or we've been on a day trip and we come home, we think that we absolutely love this, you know, particular, whether it's a piece of sculpture or, yeah. you know, a piece of art or something for that rug, what, you know, a pillow, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And then we get it into our space and we're like, oh, dear. Yeah, what do I do with it? It doesn't quite look the same, you know, the yeah. thought that I had and where I was going to put it is not, it's not quite working out, but you still mm -hmm. love the item. Mm -hmm. So what a great idea to be able to come in after a period of time and look yeah. at some of the things, because you're absolutely right. You know, life changes. Yeah. We, we don't just, it's not static. We don't leave, the, you know, make up a room and then it stays like that forever. I mean, I, I would love yeah. it to be picture perfect all the time, but that's not really the way that we live, right? Yeah. And that's a, that's a big part of um, what I've learned through this process as well is that I am like, I would love to have floors you could eat off and, you know, have the pillows fluffed all the time, but it's just not realistic. And, and I never want uh, for myself or my clients to feel like they entertain and then, you know, have to fix everything the second yeah. someone gets up or whatever. Right. So I do try and, um, make my designs livable and, and, you know, um, plan for little messes along the way and plan for life to really happen in these spaces because it's going to, and yeah. you're going to be much happier if, you know, we, we think of that ahead of time and, and, sort of start to adjust those expectations. Like it doesn't have to be picture worthy all the time. It just has to be um, perfect for you and, mm -hmm. and your lifestyle. So that's a great point. Now, if I know that each individual designer has their own particular style or something that they really love or they gravitate to, or it's your sort of your own comfort zone, mm -hmm. is how would you describe your firm's style as the as the principal designer and the person who's sort of making all of the connections with the clients? Mm -hmm. For our viewing and listening audience who are hearing you speak and think, wow, this sounds really interesting. I'd like to connect with her, but hmm. What kind of, what just sort of stuff does Michaela like to do? Um, yeah. Give us a little bit of insight into that. I, I never, uh, I still haven't quite figured out my, my answer to this question, but um, I, I really think it's hard to, to fit my or anyone's style into a box with a name. Category. And, mm. and I, I think that's a big part of my whole point about things being personalized and and unique to you, you and your lifestyle is that my style I feel like has again evolved over time and it's like I don't I I'll pick up something because it speaks to me not because it fits into a certain style category um and I think what I've sort of come to realize is that the more you listen to those instincts and, you know, allow yourself to be drawn to certain items, things just tend to fall into place and, and you learn about yourself that you will gravitate to, um, cohesive things, uh, naturally. So, um, I, I actually encourage clients and, and, uh, everyone to, um, not define their style as much, but allow it to be a little bit eclectic and, um, and, you know, pick up a, an unexpected piece that maybe isn't modern farmhouse or isn't um, minimal and, you know, work it into your space because if you see it and it brings you joy, then I, I think that's, that's a bonus. So. That's a really good point because I like that you don't sort of, you, you think outside the box by not putting your client in a box. Well, right? I try to, and I think, I mean, I have, um, my taste and I, you know, I like things to be sort of comfy and homey and, and light and airy and, and that sort of thing. And, and I love my color, but I, I love neutrals. And, um, I think as I learn more about the clients, I can sort of tell what direction they head into, but it's also challenging them to see another side of things too. And maybe, you know, um, I love bright, colorful spaces, but, but maybe you need a serene space to sort of come into and turn off the noise. So it's just balancing 
lots of different um, styles for maybe different purposes, I guess. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, if you were taking a look at the industry as a whole, because, you know, every industry, and I'm sure, you know, if you pick up a design magazine, they all have, you know, um, color selections for spring and then color selections for fall and, you mm -hmm. know, different tips on what to do based on the seasonality or the functionality of your home. Mm -hmm. If there were some design tips that you see us moving towards in the future, because I think that evolves as, as we evolve as people, right? I mean, when yeah. I think about the mm -hmm. house that I grew up in, and the house that I now live in, or even my parents' house now, I mean, it's significantly different in look, feel, yeah. and, and emotion, right? Mm -hmm. So is there a direction that you see the trend, a trend, or perhaps even based on lifestyle, that things are moving into a new direction? Yeah, I think based on lifestyle, it's uh, whatever we can do to, you know, simplify things. Mm -hmm. And um, that doesn't necessarily mean high tech everything, maybe it does like, you know, maybe it's, um, yeah, like remote control window coverings as opposed to manual. And that makes life a little bit easier. Um, and maybe it's smart appliances that we're incorporating and maybe that's sort of, um, a priority on, on the budget list. Um, so I think there's definitely a focus on, on that, but there's so many options out there too, that allow us to bridge that function with, our aesthetic too. So as far as um, style and aesthetic goes, uh, again, I, I think, yeah, we could sort of fit those trends into a box. But I also try not to focus too much on those trends, because my goal is to design timeless spaces mm -hmm. that the client is going to love, no matter what, and how I think we can incorporate trends into that is, you know, throw cushions or um, even the paint color could be an easy update to uh, to do if you change your mind on on a maybe a shorter term trend or something like that. So I think as long as we have the timeless foundation, then we can have fun with those trends. And I think a big um, I, I color wise, I'm seeing a lot of like reds and and sort of orangey reds and stuff like that. And uh, lots of texture. Um, and uh, I mean, summertime always, I go for like the linens and, and the flowy sure. sort of slip cover look. So mm -hmm. I think that's, I, see, I'm just going back to the timeless. Timeless stuff. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. But that's the way we really live, right? I mean, as you yeah. say, you might put a pop of color in a pillow or, you know, yeah. a, a, you know, a throw, a blanket that you might use when you're watching TV or, you mm -hmm. know, maybe even in a painting or a, a carpet on the floor. But yeah. you're not likely to paint an entire room red if that's if that's the sort of exactly. color palette. And you've seen that in magazines. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you may decide, oh, I only want one. I love that color, but I only want one little one little bit of it rather yeah. than the whole room. Right. Yeah. And that's the nice thing, too, like with those sort of um, surface accessorizing items um those are things that on our end we can we can help you switch over in our you know annual or seasonal refresh uh session so um yeah and then you're not getting into a whole new refurnishing project right so, yeah. now for those that are viewing and listening audience who are uh listening to us and listening to our conversation and they're getting an idea of some of the things and they like this whole idea of not being being not being in a box with their own particular style. Is there a size of project that is your go-to or is, do you really, do you, do you sometimes just come in and do color selections for clients who want to do a paint refresh? Um, or is it just the beginning to end where they're really doing a huge deep dive in reorganizing and, and renovating? Yeah. I mean, I, um, I tend to, uh, stick with that sort of three phase process, whether it be for a whole home or whether it just be for a bathroom. So it could be, I mean, the scale of those projects could change, but, um, uh, I usually, uh, do projects that is sort of start to finish in a small room in uh, one tiny space or in, in the whole space. An entire so reno. Are, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. I still, uh, I, I find that having that three phase process is um, takes the overwhelm out of the process. And what I find is that when we do, you know, say, I just want to update the couch, can you source me a new couch? Well, that snowballs, right? Because yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
this couch, <sighs> but at the same time, it would be great if you like, it would work better if you had a smaller chair or these, right. this drapery. Right. So that's why I always, um, lean towards sort of that, that full, uh, overhaul, whether in whatever space we're, we're dealing with. And what I tell people too, is that I'm going to design this whole space for you and give you the ideal look that I'm suggesting. And you don't have to do it all right now. You could just order the couch, but at least now you know what you're working towards if you decide to make other changes. Oh, that's a really great idea. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we do in the guest blog is we ask folks to share three um, defining words that are either advice or define what your business is all about. And yours are actually, I find, very creative in terms of or orientation. They're personalized, pretty, and functional. So why are those three words important to you and your firm? Yeah, so personalized, I, it's sort of a theme, I, I think we can do anything to your space, but unless it's personalized to your lifestyle, to your taste, to your needs, it's going to be irrelevant. So uh, everything you do in your home, in your life needs to be personalized to you. I think that's a, a huge belief and and that's a driving force in, in my designs. Um, and then pretty, of course, we're, we're dealing with interior design. So I want things to look great for you. For and sure. I think that it, it's a confidence booster when you feel good about your space and you want to invite people over and, and that in itself makes you feel good, right? Like mm -hmm. it, if you have a space that you're proud of that, that you feel is pretty, then um, you're going to be more confident. You're going to be more social. You're going to uh, feel more comfortable in, in this space. And it's just going to put a smile on your face when you wake up, I, I think. So, so, true. so true. Uh, pretty is, is kind of a, a fun one, but uh, I think it's still important. Um, and then functional, uh, it just needs to function if it's pretty but has no no use to you um i mean that's not necessarily true we can have pretty things that are just nice to look at but in as a whole your space needs to function for uh for you and anything that we can do to maximize the functionality in whatever room we're dealing with is a bonus well, you know, I want to thank you so much because this has been a really great insight. You know, we don't necessarily get to talk to people who do things that are creative for others. Um, you know, we talk to folks who are doing or providing a, a service, a product or service for folks that they get to take away, but you actually go into their home and, you know, help them with that whole level of uh, comfort and functionality. And I love the emotional connection that you make. Yeah. That, you know, well <laughs> we're really like getting in your personal space. It's so it's true. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's very okay. true. Very true. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us and giving our viewing and listening audience a little bit of a behind the scenes into how you might work with an interior designer in updating your personal space. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. That was fun. To you, our viewing listening audience, I'd like to thank you for joining us today in this edition of Keeping It Real, where we introduce you to the person behind the logo. If you'd like to connect with our guest, you'll find Michaela's contact information in the description portion below. I'm Trish Tonai, founder and host for the series. And if you're interested in sharing your business story, visit our website at shareyourstories.online. Thanks again for tuning in, and we look forward to meeting you next time when we share another great idea.